Hi, this is Simon McDad here. If you enjoy this channel, please subscribe. It does help me out a lot. Um, today I'm doing a video on abuse, stonewalling, and um, you know, kind of different aspects of controlling your partner. So I, I guess the the main point that I want to make with this video, I'll just you know skip to the end and <laughs> read the last page of the book. Um, abuse is not about harming or hurting the um, you know the other person that that certainly definitely happens that is not the goal though the the goal of abuse is control and I just want to make that completely clear so that when you're talking about physical abuse emotional abuse narcissistic abuse post um, separation abuse, any of these things, it is all about control. And the only, the, the only difference is what tools are in the toolbox. And so um, I, you know, I know I you know, mentioned stonewalling, for instance. So if you're in a relationship with a narcissist, especially, you know, um, after the emotional discard, um, I know for, for me, my partner at the time just completely withdrew emotionally and just stuff like say text whereas we had really good communication before and you know at that point the responses would be like eight hours later they might be one or two words whereas before it was really good communication with lots of um you know emojis, you know, a lot of um, cognitive empathy, if you will. But it was a drastic difference. And that was not an accident. And that was not an isolated incident. You know, that that discard phase of the relationship is um, completely um, done on purpose by the narcissist. It, it's, you know, not something that just simply happens. The narcissist, you know, typically is, is trying to do what many people call the uh, reverse discard, where the narcissist withdraws emotionally, you know, push, you know, kind of pushes you away, keeps you at arm's length, but does not end the relationship. And this is, you know, it's on purpose. And so they keep you at arm's length until the relationship's or relationship becomes so painful, so unfulfilling, so toxic that you end up breaking up with them for your own mental and emotional health. And at that point, the narcissist gives the performance of a lifetime. They will be at surprise. They will talk about everything that they've done for you how, um, you know, they'll, they'll bring up, you know, probably this, you know, the stuff from like future faking, they will just act hurt, shocked, surprised, you know, just absolutely, you know, Oscar award winning performance. But the truth, it's all, it's all a lie. They wanted this to happen. And so that stonewalling, the refusal to speak with you, the refusal to be considerate with you, you know, all of that, especially during the end of the relationship, it's on purpose and it's for the purpose of control. The narcissist views you as an object, as a toy, and they are just simply pushing you away because they want to play that game. They want to push you away until you come and break up with them and then they can tell themselves they're the good guy. Um, same thing, even if that happens earlier in the relationship with, say you try to talk to the um, narcissist about why they're receiving, you know, so many texts from their ex-boyfriend who they said they don't talk with any, any longer. You'll get word salad. That's not an accident. That is not an isolated incident. That is another tool in the toolbox 
for the narcissist to control the relationship, to control the narrative, and to control you. Same thing with gaslighting, um, you know, try, you know, playing with your, you know, triangulation, playing with your mind, the head game, saying like, oh no, you know, you know, when you, when you bring up your, you know, concerns, that just means you're insecure and that you need to deal with that in therapy. And I mean, <laughs> if you've been in a relationship with a narcissist, you've heard it all. And, and the point I'm trying to make is that. Um, you know, most likely during the relationship with the narcissist, they never laid a hand on you. That doesn't mean that you were not abused. Abuse is about control. And when the narcissist lies, gaslights, triangulates, um, you know, even comes back with word salad and, you know, because they don't want to be held accountable when they withdraw affection on purpose, when they withdraw communication on purpose and stonewall you, all those are done for the purpose of the narcissist having control over you and the relationship. And that is abuse. And so that's where the term narcissistic abuse comes from. It is, it, it is describing the tools in the toolbox of the narcissist that they use to control their partner throughout the relationship. Additionally, um, I've recently come across the term post separation abuse, which is what, you know, us, you know, old school, um, narcissist fans call, um, the smear campaign. So basically at the end of the relationship, the partner then decides to, you know, spread lies about you, um, spread half truths about you, take all the, um, you know, secrets and very private personal stuff that you told them and they'll twist it around and then throw it back out to try to hurt you. They will triangulate you with friends, family. They'll send their flying monkeys to do their work. They'll send the flying monkeys to spy on you. They'll try to, you know, lower your credit rating, you know, get you fired from work, all this stuff. And at that point, the narcissist is not laying a finger on you. And most likely at that point, you may not even see the narcissist, at, you know, during this or ever again in your entire life. But the narcissist is still doing these things for the purpose of controlling the narrative and controlling you. It is abuse, and that is why it's called post-separation abuse. And so, um, yeah, and, and again, I, I wanted to make these distinctions because I know that when you say tell friends that aren't familiar with, say, narcissism or even you know toxic relationships to that extent, and you say, yeah, um, I got out of an abusive relationship or something like that. They'll immediately think, oh my gosh, you know, your partner hit you, they kicked you, you know, they physically assaulted you. And, you know, if, you know, most likely, hopefully you'll say, well, no, you know, they never laid a finger on me during the whole relationship. And then your, your friend might say, well, then why are you calling that abuse? And it's like, because... It was about control. And if you if you want, you can list all these different, you know, tricks that the narcissist uses in relationships in order to control the relationship and to control their partner. So um yeah, I just I was, you know, dealing with some of this stuff in, in my head and, and just trying to organize my thoughts and I thought it'd be good to um you know, to make a video on it. So hopefully this has been um, helpful. Thanks.